remember playing in the dirt? It might blow your mind, but there are more creatures in a handful of soil than there are people on the planet. And yet scientists, they haven't identified millions of creatures that are under the soil. We know more about the stars in the sky than we do about the soil right underneath our feet. Can I show you something? You know what we're looking at? Soil under the microscope. This is just a smidge of soil, smaller than a grain of sand. And yes, it's moving. It's alive. You see those wiggling little creatures that are little tiny dots? Those are bacterium. And the clear circles, those eat the bacterium. And it's only when the protozoa eat the bacterium that plants can actually access nutrients. And you know what's interesting? The more diverse the population is in the soil, the healthier it is. Now imagine, you had no idea this is what you were playing with. Now imagine this soil, this busy little world right underneath our feet holds the solution to reversing climate change. Let me say it again. The way we treat soil has the ability to reverse climate change. How do I know this? I'm the third generation of a 95-year-old family company that's been rebuilding soil. We've been rescuing organic waste from landfills. You might know organic waste like banana peels, orange, coffee, coffee grounds. We take things like manure, large piles of manure, and we recycle it, and we rescue tree trimmings, stuff like bark and rice hulls. We compost them together in these huge piles. And then we, we mix other ingredients like worm castings and bat guano and make potting soils and garden products. Those are available in, in, in garden centers. It's no surprise, we've been doing this a very long time. My grandpa, Kellogg, he helped Walt Disney in 1955 convert this patch of dirt in Anaheim, California to a rich, lush, tropical jungle. My grandfather knew when Walt Disney wanted to replace the, the jungle crews, he knew that you can't grow lush tropical plants in dirt. So he created an organic soil, and Walt Disney then opened Disneyland with the Jungle Cruise. Now with a family history like this, it is no surprise I grew up playing in the soil. But when I was little, my dad would take us down to the composting plant. Mom got my brother and I out of the house, and we drove the station wagon down, and we got out of it before we even stopped the station wagon because we would run at those piles, scramble up the side, across the top, and roll down. You might remember playing in the dirt. I remember playing in the soil and playing in the manure. We did a lot of yard work when I was a kid, weeding, planting, vegetable harvesting. But one day, I was there with my father planting trees, and I took another heavy bag over to the tree, and. I'm like, Dad, why are you pouring dirt on dirt? Seriously? Well, I got a lecture that day. The difference between soil, I didn't know and I hadn't seen under a microscope, but what you're seeing here on your right, this is soil, this is alive. That's what we saw under the microscope. The dirt on the left is dead. The compost I was pouring onto the soil was alive. I was adding life to the soil. I was adding life to the trees. Today we know that it ought to be a crime to landfill organics. My father said that to me that day. It ought to be a crime to landfill organics. Our soils are starving for them. Well, what did he mean? We know what organics are and soils were starving, but I hadn't seen that under a microscope. But we know that methane a gas released in landfills, when you landfill organic matter, that gas is 30 times more toxic than carbon dioxide, 30 times more potent as a heat-trapping gas on the planet. You might think of transportation 
coal farming, what do you think is the thing that contributes the most greenhouse gases? It might surprise you. Farming is the single most destructive force on the planet. Now, it's, farmers are trying to grow food for us, but they're the biggest contributor of greenhouse gases. The chemical nitrogen that they use in order to grow plants faster is 298 times more potent than carbon for warming the planet. And to make things worse, over the last 150 years, farming has caused the loss of 1.7 billion tons of soil annually, more than the 10,000 years before the Industrial Age. According to the UN, we have just 60 years of harvests left. It's not a new problem. In fact, Franklin Delano Roosevelt said in 1938 that a nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. We have lost whole civilizations. The Mayans, the great kingdom of Mesopotamia, they've all been lost because of ignoring the properties of soil. It's so arrogant of us to think that we can abuse our soil and not, this won't happen to us. Why? Farmers are tilling the soil and food grown in this in this soil has just 20% of the nutrients that the food had that our grandparents ate. When we till the soil, we crush those microbes we met under the microscope. It, re it correlates perfectly to the rise in diabetes and cancer and Alzheimer. We are what we eat and our food comes from soil and soil is just a shadow of its former self. Farming's caught in an addictive cycle not only is it impacted by tilling, but the farmer's been trying to grow food for the whole planet, right? So they've been given chemicals, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, to aid in the growing of crops. Well, crops on a chemical diet, they grow fast, too fast. Their cell walls are very thin, just kind of like people on steroids, right? like those weightlifters in the gym. But these thin cell walls attract piercing, sucking insects, and they swarm the crops. The farmer prays, pays, uh, sprays pesticides to stop those. Not only crops growing fast, but there's an explosion of weeds, and this farmer's applying glyphosate to weeds. It kills the weeds, doesn't kill the crop. But glyphosate, you might have heard of Roundup in the news, glyphosate stays in the food that we eat. It soaks into the soil and it runs off into our water. This weakened system is now ripe for a fungus. The farmer sprays fungicides. The problem with these sides, pesticides, herbicides, fungus, fungicides, is they kill more than their targeted pest or weed or fungus. It's like we're putting our food system through chemotherapy. Is it any wonder that our soil's buckling under the weight of this? We see desertification. That's the loss of formerly fertile fields turning to desert. And we wonder, are we feeding the world or are we destroying the soil that we need for survival? Are we making global warming worse, creating bare ground, dead dirt, and drought? Dr. Alan Savory quoted here as saying, it's not drought that causes bare ground, but bare ground that causes drought. In his early career, he was known for researching the cause. He's a Zimbabwean ecologist, and in Zimbabwe, he was studying why the desertification, why what you see here, why is the savanna and the habitat of Africa turning to desert? Sadly, his research team concluded the elephants were to blame. Dr. Savory's research team commissioned the killing of 40,000 elephants. And tragically, desertification got worse. You see, elephants chew through trees, yes. They ingest and crush the seed pods, and then the seeds move through the intestinal tract of the bacteria, gets added, and their cannonballs of dung are deposited on the soil. They're like ecological engineers 
providing perfect germination chambers. Here you see these cannonballs of manure provide the seed, the moisture, the fertility, the organic matter. Elephants were actually engineering an increase in their habitat. We now know that desertification is not because of herds of elephants. And Dr. Savory spent the rest of his life undoing that terrible conclusion. He concluded that it is the absence of grasses, trees, and grazing herds that the, starts the cycle of desertification. Herds have everything to do with regenerating soil. And if I could take just a second, let's stop talking about sustainability, can we? Why would we want to sustain this damaged system and this desertification? We need to regenerate. Are you with me? Let's regenerate. And the good news is we can rebuild soil. How? Soil can be rebuilt by the humble plant. How does it work? Photosynthesis, seventh grade science, right? Plant takes the energy into its leaves. Carbon dioxide is breathed in, oxygen's left out. Carbon translocates through the plant into the root zone. In a healthy soil system, then mycorrhizal fungi attach to the root, and there's this great exchange. You see, the soil needs the carbon. The carbon's been converted to carbohydrates, right? carbon sugars. They're exuded into the root zone, and they're like cookies and cakes for those microbes you met under the microscope. The Marin Carbon Project has estimated that plants will store carbon in the soil where it belongs for up to 30 years. Kiss the Ground, a nonprofit organization that I love and has wonderful, wonderful information, they estimate that if we just restore a half a percent of the soil organic matter, we would completely negate all the car carbon, the excess carbon that's sitting in the, in the atmosphere. I had a real personal example of success in this area. Ernest Hemingway wrote about Mount Kilimanjaro. The snows of Kilimanjaro was required reading when I was in high school. It's the highest point on the continent of Africa, and it used to be covered in snow all year round, in fact, most of my life, but for the last two decades, there has been no snow year-round on Kilimanjaro. What does that do? Well, the villagers of Tanzania underneath the mountain, they're cutting down trees and desertifying this whole landscape. When the rains hit Kilimanjaro, they take the soil down the mountain into the rivers and out of the rivers and wiping people and villages and crops. So in 2010, when I visited with Plant With Purpose, they began planting trees. And in the ensuing eight years, they've planted 10 million trees around the base of Kilimanjaro. They learned organic farming techniques. They used cropping and tree cover. And the result was stunning. The transformation of Kilimanjaro, the snow returned, 2018. And people from the villages claim it is the precipitation. It makes sense, right? There's 10 million trees around the base of the mountain. It, the precipitation then hovers around the mountain and it snows. The rivers are in the right place, the soil is healthy again, and people's lives have been restored. So in short, I have great hope. We can change the way we treat soil. This example taught me humanity is not just the problem, Humanity has the solution to reversing the issues that face our planet. Now, what can you do? You've seen the wonderful work of Plant With Purpose. Kiss the Ground will make you a regenerative agriculture warrior if you want to take their online classes. But better yet, would you plant a garden? Volunteer at your community garden? I mean, digging in the soil has perks. Believe it or not, scientists have found that this humble little soil bacterium causes happiness. Actually, clinically studied the fact that the, a euphoria results from digging in the soil. Do you know that smell in a forest when you're walking along, this great smell, or when you dig in a healthy garden? That smell is the work of the microbes. It's the new antidepressant. So, let me conclude by saying, 
if you can't remember playing in the dirt, maybe it's time you get your hands dirty in soil. Tuck your plants into a beautifully compost amended soil. It's good for you, it's good for your soil, and it's good for the planet. So let's go rebuild soil. Thank you.